If you have been following along, you know we are always checking out awards as OTTs. But this time, I dug into some honorable mentions and found some surprisingly cool animations that deserve attention. This website in particular had some impressive scroll animations that caught my eye, so I thought, why not recreate it using Next.js? We haven't dived into scroll animations with Next.js and Scroll Trigger yet, so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to explore and show you how to build a slick scroll trivial animation. In today's video, we'll build the exact same animation as that website. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and if you haven't already, consider subscribing. You can access the source code through the Pro Membership via the link in the description. And for those interested, there is also a JavaScript version of this project available. Alright, let's dive into the video. We'll kick things off by creating a fresh project on the desktop. I'll use create next app and name the folder CG next scroll trigger. Once the build is ready, we'll open it in VS Code and start cleaning up the boilerplate. First, we'll remove all the boilerplate CSS from the global CSS file and the page module file. I'll also clear out everything from the page component since we won't need any of that. After the cleanup, you can run npm run dev to get the local server up and running. Next, we'll install gsap and lenis. Along with scroll trigger, we'll be incorporating Lenis for smooth scrolling. So I'll open a new terminal and install both of these packages. Now I'm going to keep the project structure very basic and straightforward, but feel free to organize it however you prefer. We'll only need three sections, so everything will be contained within this single page component. Before setting up the HTML structure, let's first add the images we'll be using to the public folder. Alright, let's dive in. First, I'll remove the existing imports since we'll be using a regular image element and I'll handle all the CSS in the global CSS file as there is not much to it. Next, we'll bring in the necessary imports. First, we add the use client directive at the top of the file to define this as a client component. We'll need use effect to trigger our scroll trigger instance, link from Next.js which we'll use for the footer, gsap and scroll trigger from gsap our main libraries, And finally, React Lenis from Lenis package, which we'll use to incorporate smooth scrolling into our page. Now, let's dive into setting up the structure of our page. We are wrapping everything inside the React Lenis component with the root prop. This ensures that our entire scrollable content is handled by Lenis for smooth scrolling. For this project, we'll need three sections. The hero section, the main section where our animation lies and the footer. Inside the hero section, we have got a simple container holding our image. Next, we move on to the main section. Here we have got the main content of the page, starting with another image, a logo. Below the logo, we have got a few lines of text. Each paragraph is wrapped inside its own div element, which is crucial for creating the line trivial animation using clip path. Finally, there is a button. And the footer is just going to have a link with some placeholder text. Now you will notice that we haven't added the cards we'll be animating yet. To do that, we'll define a function called generate rows. In this function, we are creating an empty array called rows to store our row elements. We then loop through a sequence of three times. This will generate three rows. For each iteration, we push a div with the class row into the array. Each row contains two cards. The first card with the class card left holds an image where the image source is dynamically set which ensures the first image has an odd index. The second card with the class card right also contains an image but this time the source is set to give it an even index. This approach allows us to neatly pair up our images in the left and right cards within each row. Finally, the function returns the rows array, which now contains all our row elements, each with its respective cards and images. Let's now add this function inside our main section. This will render the rows along with the cards inside them, setting us up for the next step. Mm. 
Now let's set up the styling to bring our page to life. We'll start by defining some global styles. So let's reset the margins and paddings of all elements to zero and set the box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, we are setting the width and height to 100%, applying the font, a black background color with the white text. The image elements are styled to take up 100% of their parents width and height ensuring they cover the area completely using object fit cover. Next, we move on to the sections. Each section takes up the full width of the viewport, is centered both horizontally and vertically with flexbox and is set to relative positioning for precise control of child elements. The hero section is given a full viewport height while the image inside it takes up 50% of the section's width with 1 to 1 aspect ratio. The footer section is half the height of the viewport and aligns its content to the top. The anchor link inside the footer is styled with a large font size of 4 viewport width to make it stand out. In the main section, we are extending the height to 150% of the viewport and stacking up the content vertically. This section houses the rows will animate. Each row is styled to be full width with a margin to separate them. The cards inside each row are evenly spaced using gap and are centered. The card elements themselves are given a width of 40% and a fixed height of 360 pixels. They are styled with rounded corners, hidden overflow, and a will change property for smooth animations. The main content container is centered within the section using absolute positioning and transform properties housing the logo, text, and button. The logo is a circular image with a border and initial scale of 0 which will be animated later. For the copy section, we are laying out the text lines in a column, ensuring everything is centered. Each line element is clipped using clip path, and the text is initially translated out of view, ready to be animated. Finally, the button is styled with padding, a border and rounded corners. It's also translated out of view and set to be fully transparent, awaiting animation. We also included a media query for screens smaller than 900 pixels, adjusting the card sizes for better responsiveness. With these styles in place, our page structure is set and we are ready to start animating. First, we need to register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP, so make sure you do that. Now inside the use effect hook, we set up our scroll animations. This ensures that the animations are only initialized after the component has mounted. We start by defining a set of scroll trigger settings. These settings specify that the animations will trigger when the main section reaches 25% from the top of the viewport. The toggle actions property is set to play reverse play reverse meaning the animations will play and reverse based on the scroll direction. Next, we define arrays for the X, Y and rotation values that will be applied to the cards during the animation. 
These values determine how much each card will move and rotate as the user scrolls. Next, using the GSAP utility function to array, we select all the row elements and loop through each one. For each row, we grab the left and right cards and apply the following animation. These transformations are tied to scroll progress, allowing for smooth and dynamic movement as the user scrolls. The card left will move horizontally based on the left X values and rotate according to the left rotation values. The card right will similarly move and rotate based on the right X values and right rotation values. Next, we animate the logo element. We scale it up to its full size with a duration of 0.5 seconds using an ease out effect. This animation is triggered by the scroll settings we defined earlier. We then target the paragraph inside each line element, animating their vertical position to bring them into view. This animation is also staggered, meaning each line of text appears slightly after the previous one adding a nice sequential reveal. Finally, we animate the button, bringing it into view by setting its Y position to zero and fading it in by adjusting its opacity. All these animations are wrapped within the scroll trigger settings, ensuring the play as the user scrolls through the page. To keep things clean, we also return a cleanup function at the end of the use effect. This function kills all active scroll triggers when the component unmounts, preventing any potential memory leaks. With these animations in place, our scroll triggered effects are ready to go, adding a dynamic and engaging experience to our page. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.